Welcome. Is global warming happening where you live? We often see people saying, oh, there's no global warming happening here, or we're having a tremendous amount of global warming happening here, and there's no resolution to this particular uh, argument. So I'm going to show you a little experiment that we can all do very simply uh, to prove whether there's global warming happening in your area or not. So how are we going to tell whether you have a significant effect from global warming in your area? Well, we're going to use the fact that day and night uh, have a different response to global warming. Temperatures fluctuate on all sorts of timescales, from a few minutes to days to seasons to years, and you often need decades worth of temperature measurements to be able to determine climate trends. The anthropogenic global warming theory rests on the effects of certain greenhouse gases, primarily carbon dioxide and methane, plus aerosols, of course. And the greenhouse gases affect nighttime temperatures more than they do daytime temperatures. This is because the sun beats down during the day onto the surface of the earth, evaporates more water vapor into the air, humidity levels rise, and that is a, a primary effect on determining the daytime temperature. At night, the reverse is true. Temperatures drop, humidity drops, so the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane, play a much larger role in determining the nighttime temperatures than they do daytime temperatures. So what should we expect? What we're going to do is compare, count the number of daily highs that are above average and the number of daily highs that are below average for each day of the year. And then do the same for the nighttime low temperatures. If global warming is present, there should be a small difference in the daily high ratio between the ones that are above average and the ones below average but there should be a much larger significant difference between the nighttime lows, fa much favoring above average temperatures. Now the beauty of this is it doesn't matter whether you've had an abnormally cold year or an abnormally warm year or whatever, it's the relative ratio of those two numbers that is going to be important in determining whether you have global warming or not. So what do you need to, in order to do this experiment? First thing you need is a computer linked to the internet, which if you're watching this video, presumably you already have. A pen and paper or a spreadsheet, the ability to count and add or divide, and about 15 minutes of your time. Now, the first step you have to take is to get the data. I suggest you go to the Weather Channel website, which is shown here uh, below, and enter your zip code in the top right-hand corner. When you press enter after entering your zip code, it will give you your local weather forecast. Step two, once you've got to that page, there are a number of drop-down menus across the top of the page. Choose the monthly one. The monthly menu will show you a calendar with daily highs and daily lows uh, for each day of the month. Now, if you're gonna look at the last year's worth of data, uh, like I have done, then uh, from the drop-down menu at the middle of the top of the page, I selected January of 2018. The next step is to get the average maximum and minimum temperatures for that month. You'll see at the bottom of the monthly page for your area that there are five curves. There are the average high temperatures, the average low temperatures, the record high, the record lows, and the average amount of precipitation you get for that month. For my area, Bowie, Maryland, the average high was 42 degrees Fahrenheit and the average low was 23 degrees Fahrenheit. So remember those numbers, we're going to be using them for the next part of this uh, study. Step five is to count the number of days that are above average or below average, here remarked by red or blue respectively. Now one question arises is what happens if one of the days happens to be the average temperature? What I've done here is to add a half to the above and a half to below. So when you add this up, that corresponds to the number of days of the year. For step six, you do exactly the same thing, but now for the nighttime low temperatures and tabulate those as well. Now the final step is to repeat that for each month of the year, then add up the totals for the entire year. In my case, Bowie, Maryland, for the daytime highs, I had 191 days that were above average and 174 days below average. That's a one sigma result which is not very significant. 
The nighttime lows were very different. We had 206 days above average compared with 105 days below average. That's an eight sigma result, which is very, very significant. Well, how significant is your result? Here's a very rough way of gauging some idea of that significance. Now, this is not the thorough statistical way, but it'll give you a rough idea of what the result is. Uh, for example, take the difference between the number of days that were above the daily high compared with those below. So say you had 19 more days that were, uh, ha were above the daily high uh, compared with those below. So that would be divided by 19, that would be one. Round down, it would be one. And then read the probability of this curve. So uh, a probability of one sigma is one in three. So you have a one in three chance of that being a random result, which is not very good odds. So that is probably not a significant result. If you had two sigmas, then that's a one in 20 chance. And that's pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good odds in your favor. Three sigma, which is the general scientific standard, is one in 370. But remember, I had eight sigma for my nighttime differences, my nighttime low differences. And that is one in 819 trillion. In other words, it would take 21,000 lifetimes of our universe for that result to come up randomly. So that's a very, very solid result. Now, anything above two sigma is probably a significant result. Why not try this experiment at home? Get the kids involved or the grandkids involved. And I want to know your results. Post them below with your zip code and location. So you want to give me four numbers, the number of days that are above the daytime high and the number of days below that, and then the equivalent for the nighttime lows. And then also give me your zip code or location so I can uh, plot those on a map. And if I build up uh, enough results, I will post that map on Twitter. So what conclusions can we draw? In my area, Bowie, Maryland, there was no significant difference between the daily highs above average and below. But that's not particularly surprising because Bowie experienced its rainiest year on record in 2018. So we had a lot of cloudy overcast days. However, there were significantly more nightly lows that were above average than below. So my conclusion is that Bowie is experiencing a signature of global warming. Now this makes a fun project for the kids or a class project or just so you can do it for several cities around the country or around the globe and compare the results. And I think you're going to find the results are fairly uniform that the nights are more affected by global warming than the days pr proving the presence of global warming. So if you see someone uh, presenting a YouTube video or a comment somewhere that global warming is, doesn't exist in their area or it's globally cooling in their area or whatever, post a link to this video and challenge them to take this test. And I bet you they'll have to change their tune. So until next time, goodbye.